like to invite you, for those that are interested, because this is the game changer now. The game changer is now taking you into those environments virtually. So our good friend, Mr. Zuckerberg, has spent, what, $2 billion on the thing off his headset. I see Facebook, I think, are just about to bring out a $200 version of this, wireless that connects to your phone. This is the journey of social media. This is what they're using this to, and gaming are high-end development things. Again, we're taking those toys, these great toys, and turning them to tools now. So there's no reason why in a few years' time, and possibly even earlier, the next time we meet, I don't know, but we'll say, you know, everyone put on their headsets, and we're going to go for a journey. You know, and we'll just, there'll be no drawings, no reports. We're going to take them and show you these things. So Rico's just going to set up one little demo, but then we're going to have, we've got two offices set up on either side. What I would encourage you to do, and just if you spend 30 seconds in each of these headsets, is just have a look at it because this is where the world's changing. This is what it's truly talking about. They talk about activating spatial memory. So spatial memory really is, this, it's a virtual reality term and the sense of presence. So as Rico would say, you know, and we'll just use a hand-drawn sketch because this is often where we start. Um, unless you're an architect, unless you're a designer, it's hard to envisage what those spaces are. We can now take you to those spaces, spaces virtually and you can remember them. Simple think, as that. I think the extraordinary thing here as well, Luke, is that even design professionals like ourselves, and I just will class myself that, is we had a job where some uh, traffic engineers had been poring over drawings for about three or four weeks. Um, we modelled up their scenarios, and as soon as they put the headset on, within about a minute, they'd realise that some of their curb alignments weren't right. And these are design professionals who've been poring over drawings, and all of a sudden, 60 seconds inside the Oculus, and they were able to work out that their curb alignment wasn't quite right. So even for design professionals, uh, who are used to reading drawings, the benefits of being able to actually visualise in a 100% in a accurate virtual environment, I think, is um, is quite impressive. Yeah, okay, Rico. Yeah. So, um, I'll, I'll quickly run you through what this is. So, pardon me, it's on the small screen down there because the HDMI plug's taken. Um, but um, now, this is really what um, what makes this more experienceable because we, we always talk about this thing called spatial memory, which literally means that. I will remember this room in here, and all of you, because I've been here, and I have a spatial sense of it. If I look at a floor plan of this, I forget it once, I, once I'm in the car. Um, so you can now do that with all the virtual environments with these little gadgets here. Um, so any of the things you've seen uh, in 3D there, these environments, you can experience through that. Um, and we'll certainly invite you to do that over here and in there. Um, couple uh, different projects, one being a project in Switzerland and the other one uh, being a hotel lobby. Um, here on the actually coast. the Ruby lobby we're doing out here for the, the railing work that's been built. So yeah. again, just on a side point, that was a really good example where the, the marketing people came to us originally for perspective and animation, because that's what they need. Um, through a bit of understanding of the technology, they said, my God, yeah, we can have the same output you know, of animations, perspectives, and it's so much more for the, for the same sort of investment. So, what we'll take you through down there in a moment is a complete virtual walkthrough of the lobby space, the floor space. And what was wonderful for me was when we showed it to the, the operations manager. He was then able to have you know, informed discussions with the architect, the landscape architect, about things that they wanted to look at from an operations point of view. And you'd all know, and you have all those stories of some of these operation managers and other people that don't necessarily understand drawings as well. They come and inspect something half built, and all of a sudden they, oh my God, you know, that wall's too small, that wall's too high, we need to move it. So to be able to do all that virtually was quite incredible. And then have the architects and the design team acknowledge that they needed to do something there and then in the meeting, that's the time saver. So we'll show Ruby, we'll show, show this one. And this is a little project we're doing down at uh, Skinner's. We're down, down in the Ballina here. Um, now, the way you use this, if you're keen to come up to any of these stations in a moment, um, is you basically look around and you place this little red triangle that some of you may see. Um, and, and we've got this little remote here, so if I click the middle button, I basically teleport to where I want to go. So this way I can teleport my way around this entire scene. I can also go up into the air and have an aerial overview. Um, and then the interesting thing with this one, it's about building designs and changing the guidelines, modernizing the 20-year-old guidelines to allow for beautiful outcomes. So we can be in here and actually flick through a different option. So take, take the house away, empty lot, so just go to the ground. And then just stand in front um, and look at um, the preferred outcome and the as of right outcome that is not preferred. Um, it can work with anything, any options. You can stand in front, you can just flick through the town center designs until you found the one you like, walk into it, and so forth. Uh, not, not yet buy something in there, but give it 10 years and you probably will buy something. And I'm going to say less than that. So, what we'd like to do is so we've got. Um, 
and I said, I, I please encourage you just to come up and have a look. We need one person to do it on stage, though. Or do you? All right. Quick, one, two, one. We need one volunteer. Come on. Who's a user? Someone, come on. Come on. Come on. This this is going to change your life forever. Please, somebody. Come on. Come on. That's what you get. That's it. Well done. Well done. And as long as I say something, what's occurred here is the biggest problem in this industry is the lack of you're not even willing to give it a go. Don't be harsh. That's it. That's it. That's it. You know, and I know we're in a crowded room and that sort of stuff, but that's the reality. As soon as, that's why we have 33 jobs to stop them. Someone gave it a go. Like, well, now we've got 33. It's, a, it's the ability to at least have a look at this and understand it and just be empowered by it. And that's the challenge that, uh, that, that young, young, young doctors doing their PhD in this technology have, is that you know the benefit of this. This is the reality, though, and this is the cold, hard facts, is that we have an industry that are slow changes. So that's the journey that you have ahead. God bless you, good luck with it. Uh, but it will happen, because you guys will drive it, you know. But the reality is, there is some hesitancy there. There is, you know. But I can tell you right now, um, sorry, here's where you want to go. Nick. So I'm, I'm quite sure, it'll be interesting what Nick thinks once he has headset. So Nick's got a smile on his face. So turn around. So turn around. So, so Nick, Nick, Nick is now walking around the street in Bellina. And I can tell you one thing. Every single person that puts this on their head has a smile on their face. <laughs> and God damn it, there are too many people I go to a presentation back in my day and I'll present a drawing and they'll have a smile on their face. Some, some of them do, but this is, the, this is the key and this is what's happening. This is spatial memory. And now you can have an informed discussion with Nick. I can talk to you and you can give me your thoughts, can't you? You know, he's up in you know, the air now. And now he's up in the air. Yeah. You know. But it, it's, it's, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Yeah, no, I can't see views. Yeah, exactly. Well, again, he's just talking about getting sea views, but that's actually true. We can go up every three or four metres and get views, you know. But, but this, is what, this is the game changer. This is the game changer. You can just teleport around. All right. So, that's it. Yeah. Nick, you've done well. Thank you very much. Um, so, so the next thing, I believe, what I'll show on here is a job we've done in Switzerland because we've gone super international. Hey, Nicky, oh, sorry, Nicky, I think, Nicky, Rico, okay. Rico, Rico, mate, you just keep going. I'll just use yeah. the office here. You start off with some of the other ones okay. because of the time. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so John in here is going to take you to Switzerland. No, no, I kid you. Is that right? You're in Switzerland? I'm in Switzerland. You're in Switzerland? You're in Switzerland? You're in Switzerland? You're in Switzerland? <laughs> on, on, on a project that we're working on, community consultation in Switzerland. You know, and a, and a very large, in fact, it's a little bit like South Bank of Brisbane. It's an old... Um, old expo site from Beale where they're trying to create quite a big public domain but they want 10 stories around it which is extraordinary for a place in Switzerland. So John's going to take you there. Rico's going to take you through the lobby at uh, Ruby, right? And you can walk through the lobby at Ruby 12 months before it's built. You can tell the hotel operator if you like these tables and chairs, if you like the pool environment. In fact, fingers, fingers crossed they're going to try and set this up down there eventually where they can use this to help families pre-book. You know, two years down the track once the thing's finished. And I'll stay here on this one and we'll go through a walk around this street. Sorry? <coughs> the German was just. Yes. <laughs> you, you said about the uh, sound buffers. Can, yes. Can you incorporate sound? Yeah, that's yes, it. So, so we're talking to the engineers at the yeah, moment please. around having an environment where you put, uh, you know, without the um, sound attenuation wall, this is what it sounds like. Now, we obviously get that feedback from the engineers and the, and the technology. They have to check it's all accurate. But then here's the wall. This is what it sounds like. It's the same with wind, the same with the flood. All right. It is fantastic.